Hello everyone, welcome to my first ever tutorial. My name is Michelle, also known as Labradorite Wolf on the net, and today I will show you how I made the copper statue of a robin, starting with a basic sea sphere in ZBrush. Alright, let's start! Step 1. Sculpting. Whenever I start sculpting, I block out the basic shapes. This is the stage in which I want to make sure the model makes sense anatomically speaking. It's often a lot of moving, pushing around and prodding, until you get the desired contours down. Once that's done, I get a bit too excited and usually want to add details right away. It's always good to keep in mind that it's easier to get the actual details done at a later stage, but I mean, do whatever feels good to you. As you watch me adding more and more details, I'll tell you a little bit about my favorite brushes. These are actually the most basic ones. First off, the move brush. This one is super handy to really form the basic shapes. I use this one a lot in the earlier stages, but don't get me wrong. Even after detailing, it's a very convenient brush to move around feathers or to straighten tails. Secondly, the clay brush. The clay brush is great to give your model some volume and build up some organic surfaces. Third, damn standard. This one is my absolute favorite. I use this one probably 90% of the time for detailing. It lets you carve into the model and give it some extra depth and dimension. I love using this one for fur detail and feathers, but also to make scales more pronounced. Finally, there's the standard brush. I like using this one to add some elevated details and to put down some shapes that are too pronounced for the clay brush. Step 2. Supporting. Once you're happy with your model and you exported it as a 3D printable STL file, it's time to add some supports for resin printing. I usually go a little overboard with them, because I prefer to do some extra cleanup afterwards instead of seeing my 3D print fail. And trust me, you don't want your resin 3D print to be ripped off from the build plate just because you didn't add enough supports. Step 3. 3D printing. When you're happy with your supports, it's your printer's turn to do its thing. I'm an idiot, so I didn't record anything during printing, but I have some photos of the print still on the build plate and after cleaning in IPA. When you've released your print from its confines and cured the resin, you need to assemble the pieces together. I printed the body and legs separately because in that way I could be more careful supporting really thin parts like the toenails. Assembly is simple. Just put some super glue on it to connect the pieces and once it's dry, take a little drop of uncured resin and smear it across the seam. Cure it and boom! Super smooth transition and your seams are gone. Step 4. Electroforming. Now this is what you probably came for. Once your 3D print is done, we need to give it a special treatment to prepare it for its copper layer. First off, a couple of things you need. The power supply. This laboratory power supply has the option to adjust both the voltage and current and is going to provide the electricity that is necessary to start the electroforming process. A conductive paint. I like this particular graphite spray paint because it puts down a very uniform conductive layer on your 3D printed surface. Copper sulfate solution. This is what makes up your electrolytic bath and contains all the important things to make the chemical reaction happen. Some people make their own solution, but I'm not aspiring to become the next Breaking Bad character, so I bought this pre-made one. Gleaming Agent This can help to add some shine to your copper. Just put a few drops in your solution beforehand. A cathode and an anode Make sure your anode is big enough to supply enough copper ions for your electroforming process. The surface of your anode should be about twice the size of your cathode surface. The cathode will be your 3D printed object plus the copper wire which it will dangle from in the electroforming bath. Alright, let's give the 3D print a nice layer of graphite to make it electrically conductive. Make sure to give each layer enough time to dry. I usually go for two thin layers in total. Once done, you can help the layer be extra conductive by slightly brushing up the surface with a paper towel. Next up, attach your 3D print to a thin cathode wire that will be connected to the negative pole. Add the anode in your electrolytic bath and attach it to the positive pole. 
Once your object is in the solution and the anode and cathode don't touch, you can turn on the power supply. I like to start off slow to make sure I don't overdo it and put it around 0.35 amps. This will vary per object and with size of your object. Larger objects require a higher current. Let it all sit and check up on your object every now and then. If the process is going too slow, just increase the current a bit and see how it goes. If little spots or parts don't electroform, add a little bit of extra conductive paint on them and put it back in the electrolytic bath. And done! Perfect! Brush your object and if desired you can give it a nice colored patina with a bit of liver of sulfur. Add a couple of drops to a cup of hot water and dip your object into it. Once you're happy with the color, neutralize it with distilled water and your copper statue is done. I glued mine on a piece of wood for a base. Now it's ready to be given to my grandma. And no, look at that smile. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed this tutorial, see you next time, bye bye!